thing you want to say to him before we get to see this series tonight? This is where the fun begins. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. Hello there. And welcome to the Curry Review. This is going to be unscripted thoughts today uh, about the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi, which I have been highly anticipating coming to Disney Plus and hopefully physical media one day because I really need a Blu-ray of this. To start, I will be covering non-spoiler thoughts and then I will cover spoiler thoughts and I will let you know when I get to that territory so you can exit the video before I talk about it. It was pretty cool last night. Uh, they decided to release the Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes at midnight EST instead of 3 a.m. EST like they usually do for Star Wars shows. So I was able to stay up and I woke up my wife and she did her best <laughs> to watch parts of it with me before she fell asleep. But I'm so glad I did. Uh, so stayed up a little bit late, but it was absolutely worth it because so far Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of the best things to come out of the Disney Star Wars era. I've seen a lot of complaints online about tiny little things, and I think people just nitpick stuff to death. I think people have such ridiculous expectations and are so highly critical because Disney may put out a couple things they don't like in Star Wars that they just can't enjoy anything now. I'm a huge fan of The Mandalorian. Um, I love The Clone Wars Season 7. I love The Bad Batch so far. Uh, the Book of Boba Fett stumbled a little bit, but I still really enjoyed it overall. There's just so much to look forward to and so much to enjoy, and Obi-Wan Kenobi is no exception. The John Williams theme is just great to, great to hear uh, the man do a theme again. And then the composer, whose name I'm forgetting, just Googled it, Natalie Holt, uh, who did Loki. I love what she's doing so far. Deborah Chow is absolutely the person for this. Uh, she is directing everything so well. The atmosphere, the pacing, the tension, the performances, the story. I just, I, I love, I love it so far. It's so great to see uh, one of my top two favorite Star Wars characters back. It is a very serious tone. Um, there's not an overwhelming amount of action in these first two episodes, but be patient. It is a limited six episode series. We will get there. This is a character study of Obi-Wan as well as a great story to explain certain things in A New Hope. I love that. There's a huge surprise here that I am just so happy they did and I did not see it coming. And I'm just really looking forward to see where the rest of it goes and it makes so much sense. There's only one or two things that I'm not a huge fan of so far. Um, Mainly because I'm just not really sure where they're going with it. Yeah, so definitely check it out if you've been on the fence or if you want to watch it. I'm really looking forward to the thoughts. But from here on out, I'm going to be talking about heavy spoilers. So this is your cue to leave the video if you haven't seen it. From here on out, spoiler talk, spoiler discussion, spoiler dialogue, spoiler unscripted spoilers. This is your warning about spoilers. Okay, so now... The spoilers. I did not see it coming that Reva, the third sister, would stab the Grand Inquisitor. And as of right now, I'm not sure how to feel about it. Because if he's dead, look, just, just run with me on that train of thought. If he's dead in this story, that decanonizes and retcons Rebels. Like the entirety of the first season. And that is not okay. That was the first piece of Disney Star Wars. And... I love Star Wars Rebels. It is one of the best animated shows I've ever seen. So, with that line of thought, I don't think Disney would carry their retconning issues that far. They have a problem with retconning books and comics. So my guess is that he's just not dead. And he's going to come back with a vengeance uh, sometime soon. And I hope he does. I've read that the actor uh, Rupert Friend, Rupert Fiend, it'd be kind of funny if it was Fiend. I've read that he is expected to reprise this role for the rest of the series so i'm hoping he'll make a comeback and this will just be part of an exciting incident in reva's territory also speaking of reva she is probably my other nitpick her performance just isn't doing it for me yet i don't know if it's her voice uh in the way that she's choosing the accent that she has or is just that her intimidation tactics come off as very forced she's the one part of the show i'm struggling with 
it's not affecting my enjoyment so much as it is I'm just kind of noticing it. She has a really great scene with Uncle Owen where I thought she did a, a great job. Everything else after that, I'm just I'm just not sure yet. Uh, I could be my mind could be changed maybe when we get more context. But like there's there's a scene of her parkouring through uh, Dayu, which is a really cool new planet. More on that later. And it, at times it just felt like it went on a little long and was a little bit much. Um, and the practical effects didn't look I think as great as they thought they would. They they actually looked a little bit too floaty for my opinion, almost like it was coming out of the Matrix. Now that's really nitpicky because parts of it looked really cool and I overall I don't mind, but it's just something I'm observing. Another observation was their Deborah Chow uses a good bit of um, handheld camera techniques in her cinematography, and there's a particular instance in one scene where there's a bunch of shaky cam, and I think it's there to as I was discussing this with a friend, we kind of agreed that it's there to kind of heighten the tension. Um, and I observed that it was there, and I'm not always a huge fan of that style. It just kind of depends on how it's used. But my wife pointed out, she's like, why is the camera so shaky right now? And when she pointed it out, it did hit me like how much it was doing it. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if maybe they went a little too far with that in that scene. But I observed it was there. Not a huge deal. Just, again, nitpicks. I am reminded, strangely, of Luke in The Last Jedi. Now, when it comes to The Last Jedi, I know a lot of people have mixed opinions and I'm the, somewhere in the middle. I don't think it's the worst thing Star Wars has ever put out, nor do I think it's the best thing since Empire. I, I think it's a pretty good movie, um, but I have a lot of issues with its execution, and I don't think it's as great as people say, nor is it as bad as people say. So that being said, it, they're deconstructing Obi-Wan here rightfully after everything he's been through it's good to see that there are ramifications and consequences to that, that he's not just where he's at in A New Hope. There had to be a journey there, and they're filling in such important story de detail we didn't even know we needed, such as Obi-Wan meeting Leia, or should I say Ben meeting Leia. That was a huge surprise to me. I did not expect to see Leia in this series, especially in such a prominent role, but it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. Her being here explains why she is a relationship or seems to have a relationship with knowing who Obi-Wan is in A New Hope and why he'd be willing to drop everything yet again to go find her for Bail. And seeing Jimmy Smith's back, I think it's Jimmy Smith's, back as Bail Organa is just uh, so, so great. And seeing parts of Alderaan, which we've never gotten to see really before, uh, extensively, it's just, it's just really cool. Deborah Chow is keeping George Lucas's idea alive of taking us to new worlds and new planets and uh, new visuals already in just two episodes. I'm actually kind of sad it's already a third of the way over, to be honest, but I'm really looking forward to what else they do. And of course, the man of the two hours, Ewan McGregor, is just killing it as Obi-Wan. It's great to see him back. He actually handles himself pretty well in the fight scenes from what I could tell. Deborah Chow's directing is fantastic and that end. When he finds out that Darth Vader, Anakin Skywalker, is still alive, it just sent chills down my spine. And seeing seeing Hayden back is going to be really, really special. It already was here. My one extra nitpick with that is typically in Star Wars lore and Legends and from, from anything I've encountered in the new canon, um, especially in the Lords of the Sith book, people don't know Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. Most of the time, anybody who does know is dead or people just speculate, like Grand Moff Tarkin. I'm kind of expecting that Reva knows, not because Vader told her, but because she knows because she saw him at the Jedi Temple at Order 66. It's heavily implied, at least in my mind, that that opening, wonderful, incredible long take from Order 66 at the Jedi Temple, that Reva is one of those younglings. If they don't go that route and she just knows, I think that'd be a huge logic gap in the story. I don't know if I'd consider it a plot hole, but it could be a plot hole given that it's established in previous lore that nobody knows who Darth Vader truly is. She also could have just said, Lord Vader is waiting for you, and it dawns on Obi-Wan that Anakin's alive because he knew that Vader was Anakin. I'm really happy that we only have to wait till Wednesday next week for episode three, and then we'll be halfway over. But I'm very, very wowed and floored and excited and just in what I would call what my friend some of my friends would call Star Wars bliss and um, if you haven't seen it I actually help co-host a Star Wars podcast called a certain point of view podcast 
We are covering Obi-Wan Kenobi, the first two episodes, on Saturday. Come check us out. I may or may not be on the episode, but they always have great discussions. Um, we just covered the prequels, and I'm really looking forward to our talks there as well as covering my own here. Obi-Wan Kenobi, loving it so far. Definitely check it out. It's great to have the man, the myth, the legend, Kenobi, back. Please subscribe for more thoughts as I cover each episode of Obi-Wan as they release, and more coming soon. Thanks. General Kenobi. I sounded like Bane right then.